Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I know a lot of you may have gotten one of these recently. It happens to be the Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer. And as you can see, I've already printed something inside this little guy. Can anyone tell what it is? If you guessed the Xenomorph from the Alien movie series, you would be absolutely correct. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work in reverse. And I thought I'd make a video for all you first time users. Maybe you're thinking about getting a resin printer or maybe thinking about getting an Elegoo Mars. You're in for a treat. This is your lucky day. Because this is the Elegoo Mars 101 tips and tricks and some of the tools I use to clean my prints and some of the items that you'll need to make your 3D printing adventure the most successful adventure of all time. So are you ready to get going? Let's get started. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back. So again, like I said, we're going to work a little bit differently. We're going to work in reverse. So again, we printed the alien xenomorph from the movie Aliens. How'd you like to see one of these crawling through a ventilation duct near you somewhere? So I printed him. He's on the build plate awaiting cleaning. I'm going to carefully place him back down. Place the lid back on so I don't have to smell the smelly fumes. Now, to talk a little bit about safety. Goggles. First safety feature, protect your eyes. Second, nitrile gloves, not latex gloves, nitrile gloves. Latex will, resin will leach into, late, resin will leach into latex and will get on your hands. So use nitrile gloves. You can get these gloves really cheap. Uh, your Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer was packed with several sets of these. You're going to need more, so head down to your local Walmart. Uh, if you have a Harbor Freight near you, a drugstore if you're overseas, you can pick nitro gloves up cheap. Usually they're over by the diabetic supplies, things like that. Um, you can find these just about anywhere, any drugstore, Walmart, anywhere. So you need a set of nitro gloves. Get you a big box, they're cheap. Next thing you're going to need if the fumes bother you is a mask. I use, uh, sometimes I'll use a respirator if the resin is really strong. I've been using Elegoo uh, resin lately and it's not strong at all so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me so I don't use a mask. Um, go down to your Dollar General, your Dollar Tree, Walmart in the trial size aisle, get you some cheapo toothbrushes. This works really good in getting the nooks, into the nooks and crannies of your prints. When I remove the supports on these prints, I pretty much just use my fingernails to snip them off and I do that before I rinse them in either the IPA or what we're going to talk about is some of the cleaners I use, the Mean Green. I'll use that to pop them off before I put it into the cleaner and the reason why is because the resin is still a little pliable after it's been printed. These are great. These are little side nippers. You should have received a set of these if you receive an Elegoo Mars printer. These work great. Um, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below if you don't have a set of these, but these are awesome. Most FDM printers know exactly what these are and these work fantastic with resin printing. Next thing you're going to need is some paint filters. Uh, you, you were given a bunch of these when you got your printer as well, but it's, a, it's, it's basically a paint strainer. It strains the resin from your vat back into the resin bottle and it gets up all of the uh, cured bits of resin. Maybe something got in there, maybe some debris or something that got into your resin or maybe it was a failed print and you have little bits of cured resin. You don't want that back into your bottle. You want it to capture all that with these paint strainers or paint filters and these work awesome and we're going to use one of these soon. You'll also need a filter. I happen to 3D print this filter and I use it all the time on my uh, on my printers to strain. The filters fit in perfectly in here, but again, you could go pick up one of these cheap at a dollar store somewhere. Works as well. You're going to need lots and lots of paper towels. And also, I've bought some microfiber cloth and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. So. And you're going to need one of these. This is my favorite. 
and we've talked about this. I talked about this in almost the, uh, back in February. Is this is a pickle container, a pickle strainer container. This works great for any of your cleaning fluids that you use. What I like about this is it has a four locks on the top with a rubber ring because that means no leakage. So you can place your print in there, give it a little swirly swirl or a shaky shake, and no leakage. So these are fantastic. You can reuse them. You can rinse them out. Uh, check this out. You got a little, you got a little strainer basket in there. You can do a little dippity do like this and strain all of the fluid out of your print. Again, snap the lid back on and no leakage. One of these little guys, a paint scraper. This helps to uh, remove your print from the bed and we're gonna show you how to do that. And I like these little guys. This is from a company called Rocket Bus and I'm gonna show you how to use this. This is like a little squeegee that folks use to put, you know, you see those little vinyl emblems people have on their cars like, hey, you know, Godzilla killed my family or here's, you know, here's my Godzilla is my family or do I have a walking dead family? Anyway, this is what they use to rub those graphics onto the car windshields. Well, what I like about it is it's not plastic. It's kind of, rub it's, it's a rubberized material. And I use this to scrape all of the resin out of my vat and guess what it doesn't scratch like something like this i don't like using plastic i don't like using metal scraper because any uh, it, any any uh, risk of scratching the fat i want i'd rather use something like this rubber and it's it fits on in all the corners and we're going to show you how to do that short today you also need some type of solvent ipa is a solvent you can also use the green stuff that's in here, this happens to be Mean Green. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description below that Uncle Jesse did on different cleaners and how they clean the resin prints. I know some people use Mr. Clean, some people use Simple Green. I happen to use the Mean Green because it seems like it cleans the best. So we're actually gonna see if it cleans the best. I also picked up one of these on Amazon the other day. It is an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to put a link in the description below to this as well. The reason why I bought this is because I can set the temperature on this and heat it up to 50 degrees Celsius and uh, your cleaning solution actually does a little bit better when it's warmed up. I choose not to put alcohol in here because of the inherent danger of flammability. So use one of these at your own risk, but the ultrasonic cleaners tend to get your prints super duper clean. So this is just an added bonus. If you don't have one of these, no big deal, but uh, they are helpful. Okay. Next thing is, last, last but not least, is a sprayway glass cleaner. I know you've, some of you have seen me use this. Sprayway glass cleaner is a cleaner that you use for your glass windows, but it contains a perfume grade alcohol that will clean resin like nobody's business. I use this to clean my build plates. I'm gonna show you how to do that soon. Okay, so here we go. First thing you wanna do, gloves, safety, gloves, gloves, goggles, gloves, goggles, okay. Here we go. I'm going to remove the lid. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is to remove your print from the build plate. Slowly remove the screw. Slowly take out your print, like so. What I like to do is have some paper towels underneath. Now, in order to remove this, I take this spatula, the hair, how did the hair get in there? That's crazy. All right, so you take this spatula and you go at it at an angle. I like to go kind of at a 45 and you just kind of go slow and it kind of gets under the, gets under the supports like this and you kind of angle it off and it'll kind of release itself. You may have to go around a little bit. There we go. A little bit more. And we almost, oh, there it goes. Okay, it is now released. Okay, and as you can see, I've got resin all over my fingers. So again, that's the reason why you wear gloves, right? Okay, as you can see, these resin Supports are starting to come off really, really easy. This is so crazy here, how well these things come off. I'm gonna 
We're going to talk about this in, a, in the next video. I'm going to actually show you the supports that I used and all my settings that I used on this particular Xenomorph Alien and you can print one yourself. And uh, this it's, it's amazing because the supports are removed so they remove so well and it's just amazing to me. So, so what you'll want to do is you'll go through here and slowly start to remove the supports like so. Look how easy that is. That is just that is just insane. And the reason why is because the depth on these supports are not it's not very deep on some of these. Now I have a few little a few little nubs that's left here and there. And there's some of the supports that are behind his little creepy backbone here that I'm getting rid of and he's got some supports under his chin here that I'm going to get rid of, like so. Check this out. Yeah. Creepy, eh? All right. This one there. Round his back. And... Okay. And this is where I'm going to get the... This is a good place. This is a good time to get your nippers and just start going around and Kind of snipping some of the some of the the spots. I don't know if you can see here, but there's some little tiny nubs that are like right on the top of his leg. That's a good spot for these nippers. So you can just get in really close and take some of these little tiny spots out. And all right. That is looking really Good. And inevitably, I'm going to miss some. You can see I missed some behind his leg here. Some of these are... I just use my little nippers to turn those loose there. And there's one there on his chest. Not that he minds. And yeah. That's looking pretty stinking cool there, guys. There's a little bump right there that you get rid of. Here's another one over here. One thing to keep in mind, I know you probably are asking yourself, hey Garrett, those nippers that you're using, you're getting resin all over them. Well, I'm well aware of that and I need you guys to be well aware of that too because you don't want to set these nippers down somewhere and then take your gloves off and then grab them again and you're thinking, oh, I just contaminated my hands because it will happen. Ask me how I know this. So, you want to go through, kind of feel around the print and you can feel like little sharp edges if there's any nubs left on there. Uh, like I said, inevitably, inevitably you're going to miss some, but all in all, look how awesome this is. I mean, this is just, this is stinking amazing. The, the quality that these 3D resin printers can produce. Again, this is at 50 microns and this is just, this is just stinking amazing. Ooh, to the ventilation duct. Okay, so the next thing I want to do before I do anything else is do a little cleanup. Okay, so you know I've contaminated this, I've contaminated my nippers. You know my I've got I've got paper towel here. I've got my I've got my bill plate here that's got goo all over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a roll of paper towel kind of wipe my hands off. Um, I'm going to wipe my build plate off. I'm not through cleaning my build plate yet. That's coming here in just a second. I'm gonna wipe this off. And notice I still have my gloves on, okay? Just, this is just a preliminary. So I'm, gonna, so I'm gonna wipe the nippers off. Make sure they're nice and wiped down. Wipe this off. It's a good idea to have your uh, solution already open. Uh, what I like to do before I do anything, before I even mess with the print, is I'll take my tools and I'll drop them in there, okay? And just it gives me an opportunity to clean everything up and I will um, use don't laugh at me, but I use a little bit of Sprayway glass cleaner 
on my hands and I kind of wipe it in there because it does uh, tend to dissolve the resin. But uh, this works really good. So what I'll do is I'll put my lid back on, shake it up, rinse all the resin off my tools, take those out. So after the tools are in there, after the tools are in here, what I like to do is take, again, before you, so you don't contaminate anything. And here's a trick. This is kind of cool. Is uh, gather all your supports in one spot. And what I like to do is grab your trash, roll it up into a ball, like so, with your gloves on, pinch a little bit of the glove here at the wrist, take it, pull it over your trash, like so. And then, with your clean hand, grab your other glove by the edge, flip over like so, and now you have a neat little bundle of trash with the inside out gloves, so no resin, no harm, no foul. Get us a fresh paper towel and take the, remember our, our tools that we used earlier? We've been rinsing around in the solution. I'm going to take them out here. Put this back on. Do a little snap snap. Clean off my tools. My tools are nice and clean, back in business. So now they are no longer contaminated. I'll put those on the non-contaminated side of the table. Now we still have this thing to deal with, the bill plate. So I take a little sprayway glass cleaner. Foaming action, yes. Foaming action of the sprayway glass cleaner, the perfume grade alcohol, cleans the bill plate nicely. Clean the top. In the bottom, in the sides. I like about it. Listen, almost squeaky clean with just a little bit. Again, it's the alcohol. If you didn't want to use spray with glass cleaner, just use regular isopropyl alcohol. It cleans it very nicely. All right, clean. I'm going to set that off to the side. Okay, now we have our vat to deal with. So. I have a bottle of Elegant Grey Resin that I need to put everything back into. So I'm going to remove the screws from my vat. I'm going to get my paint filter. I'm going to remove the top. There goes my funnel. My paint filter goes in like this. Like this. Hold it. Remove the vat, and if you'll notice, the vat has a little vat has a little notch right there in the corner. That's for a reason. So I just start pouring my resin into the filter, like so, and all right. You can see this. But remember the little squeegee we talked about? So I squeegee. Look how clean that is. What I like to do is I, I mentioned earlier is get some of these microfiber cloths. You can pick up a tin pack at Walmart. I picked up a tin pack at Walmart this afternoon for $4.48. Cool thing is, is you can cut them up into little tiny squares like this. I cut these up into squares. Uh, I ended up getting around 160 of these because I get 16 little squares per towel. So that gives me 160 squares. So that's around 8 cents a piece. So it's this is good enough. This stuff will not scratch your FEP. So what I like to do is take a little bit of IPA, the isopropyl alcohol, 
This is the 91%. Squirt just a little bit in the bottom of your vat. Take your microfiber cloth and go around and clean out the bottom. Any residual alcohol will dry, but these little microfiber cloths are awesome because they do not scratch the FEP. So do not use a paper towel on these guys because it, it will end up scratching the FEP. Uh, okay, that one's done. He's ready to be put back into the Mars. Now let's focus on our our alien print. I, again, I've still got my gloves on. My lid is off my pickle strainer. So again, what I want to do is I want to go through, want to make sure there's no little spots on here of there's a little piece there. Again, you can just kind of rub your finger over it to see if there's any uh, spots where the supports we're stuck on, but this actually is a really good job. So again, I'm going to take my pickle container, I'm going to dunk my print in here. I'm going to wipe my hands off a little bit, with some of the leftover alcohol, put the lid on this, give a little shake. swirly swirl this is not cleaning any of the resin off by any of the stretch of the imagination all I'm doing is just trying to break up some of the excess resin one thing you want to do is you notice I've been touching this pickle container quite a bit I probably had a little bit of uncured resin on my hands so that's not a big deal again best thing to do is take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol put it on a paper towel and just kind of wipe things down. Make sure there's no resin on your hands. And like I did before, is I have all this trash. Grab it up into a ball like this. Remember, grab the middle of the glove. Don't grab your skin, but grab the middle of the glove right here. Pull it over. Wraps it right around the... So what I have here is a digital ultrasonic cleaner I picked up on Amazon. The, the links uh, will be in the description below to this particular cleaner. What I did is I placed, move it over here so you guys can see down in here. I set it to 50 degrees Celsius and I put some of the mean green cleaner in there and I'm going to take my Mr. Alien Xenomorph, and I'm going to place him in the t in the tank. You can see he goes all the way down. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Reach in here, take him out. Ooh, he's squeaky clean. That's pretty stinking cool. Thanks, Uncle Jesse. I'm going to put links to Uncle Jesse's um, video on his cleaner comparison in the links below, but. Uh, I'd say that was a success. That's pretty cool. Here's a finished product, guys. I'd say it looks awesome. Down to the teeth. I mean, I can't zoom in with my camera close enough, but you can actually see inside of his mouth. The resolution is just unbelievably clean and sharp. I think it looks really good. And he's completely cured. He's been inside my uh, UV lamp curing. Hey guys, thanks once again for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. I hope you enjoyed our foray into the alien world, cleaning up this guy and learning a few tips and tricks with your Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer. The next video that we have is going to be concerning this guy again, but we're gonna show you how to set this print up in Chitu Box, which is the slicer that is used in Elegoo Mars on the Anycubic Photon, but we're gonna show you how 
to set up supports. Use the auto supports. There's some really cool settings that how I got this guy to turn out so well. We're going to go over those as well as some tips and tricks. With that being said, hope you guys have a great evening. And as always, we'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now. What's going on? What's going on guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I know a lot of you may have gotten a little bit. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm.